But yeah, I think most people that even dedicate themselves to Claymore don't even play it right. Because Claymore has something going for it, but you need to play the weapon to its strength. Not play it like, uh, like any other weapon. That would be a dope vid. You know what? Let me explain it right now. Let me, let me grab a Claymore and I'll, I'll do this real quick. I'll show you guys how to play the Claymore properly. And what people are, are not doing to do to play the, the Claymore properly. And no, I'm not talking about Storm Stomp. <laughs> first of all, like, um, to start with, I think I'm going to get that out of the way first. Um, when you're playing uh, any weapon that is not necessarily as good at uh, roll catching, it's always a good idea to, to have it like poison. So a poison miss, poison claymore, like if you really want to make the weapon work, is actually a pretty... Like if you want to push claymore for meta, it's actually a pretty meta. But uh, I think it, you're going to be better off though using rot, uh, rot Grease. But to start with, those are like probably some of the most important thing that you can have on your Claymore to make it good. So that's one. But that's not what I was thinking about when I said that people don't play it right. It's um, So people know that uh, you have like a good R2 with the Claymore. That's really like the strength of the weapon. But what people don't do right is they, they go for the crouch here. They go for the crouch and then they try to follow up the crouch with like an R2 or they try to follow up the, the your hit confirm with like a piercing fang and it's fine you know it is a timing mix up but the idea for like any mix up that you're doing with Claymore is you want to you want to first um, uh, make your opponent understand that when you do the like the crouch motion you come out with a crouch attack. So you want to make your opponent respect the fact that every time you do crouch, a, a crouch attack is going to come out out of it. And then you use that and the animation blending and the uh, attacks looking similar, you use that to mix it up from there. So you don't do an R2 from neutral, you do an R2 after you do a crouch attack like that. That's the important part. So you see so many people, they do this, but then afterward they'll do a normal R2. No, you want to use the, the crouch as a, an indicator and like priming your opponent to expect this attack and from there you mix up the R2. And that's where Piercing Fang comes in strong because Piercing Fang is a third timing mix up to that same uh, that same mix up. So when you crouch and do crouch attack and then you crouch, you do crouch R2. Yes, you can crouch and do charge uh, crouch R2 because uh, you can reaction release roll catch with the charge R2 and free aim it. But you can also mix it up with this because that's another timing so yeah it, it is absolutely conditioning but you have to like if you want to use the greatsword properly you have to condition your opponent uh with this like this is what the weapon has going for it you play the weapons to their strength not all weapons play the same uh, for instance fist you don't you never get you never get to goblin step with like say um with a kestis like you can't like all play the weapons the same with kestis it's all about you know, these R2s, these running attack, and to some extent, these long-range jump attacks. That's what the Kestis is all about. You don't play every weapon the same. The Claymore is you you do the crouch, and then you mix up from there. Great Lance also doesn't play like that. Great Lance, you do, uh, you do the crouch, and you mix up the timing of the crouch, because the crouch itself is already fast enough. So that's different. With Claymore, you actually you crouch to prime your opponent, and then... You, mix, you don't mix up the timing of this. Well, you can, but you mix up the timing of this or you go for an R2. Usually you'd want to not mix up the timing of this and instead go for an R2 because your R2 is going to get you more damage. So this is pretty much how you should be playing Claymore and how I'm not really seeing any players play it properly like that. Most players will do this and then when, uh, when it comes to like... Uh, following up they'll just do a normal standing r2 or they'll use the entire move set normally like you know that you'd use on any other weapon no you want to prime your opponent you want to prime your opponent with the crouch indication the indication that you are ready to do the fastest attack that claymore has which is you know the quick crouch so that's how you play it <clears throat> it's not that complicated it's pretty simple and obviously like i said at the beginning you pair that with the <laughs> the best um the best status you can apply for clay so 
you, you pair that with rod grease if you want to have it optimal <laughs> or if you want to be a bit more honest you can use poison mist but I don't even know if it's really more honest because you can really poison proc someone in like three ghost hits <clears throat> very easily it's just that claymore is not necessarily the <clears throat> the best weapon at keeping pressure to prevent bolus but it's still possible also, by the way, the, what I just said there for Claymore, that's a 1v1 thing. You don't really have time to do much of that when you're invading. This is really like how you play the weapon in a 1v1, not how you play <coughs> the weapon against multiple opponent. You don't have time to do that. Against multiple opponent, your best bet is high damage and switching target. So from what I've noticed, Piercing Fang is actually very good at that. When you're invading, you piercing Fang and last second you switch to like another target and you know the the strength of piercing Fang against multiple people is it's telegraph the wind up that is telegraph but if your opponent expects you to go in the direction you're pointing so at their friend they're not going to attempt to dodge but the thing is you can turn last second and that's much harder to react to <clears throat> so piercing Fang is very good at fighting multiple opponents also, what I said about the crouching, you know, it's not like you only want to do that in the entire fight. That's not what I meant. Like, uh, I think, like, personally, the best opener for the greatsword, like, the, the attack that has the most range is the jumping attack. So you don't want to just stop doing that <laughs> just because of, uh, of the mix-up. Okay, there you go. That's the proc I was looking for. Okay, so you see what I mean? That's exactly what happened there. You see how good this guy was at like reaction rolling everything? The moment the moment I went for the actual mix-up, the crouch into charge R2, it's the only time he got roll caught throughout the entire fight. So while uh, my strategy was not to go for like the whole crouch the entire time, the first thing I was looking for, this guy was good by the way, good fight. The, the, the first thing I was looking for was to rot him first, right? So after we rotted him, I started going for like, I wait for him to whiff, and then <clears throat> you go in for the mix-up I talked about. You won because of the rot? I mean, that's that's the whole, well, I mean, it's always easy to say that afterward. If I didn't use rot, I would not have played the same way. You don't go for ghost hits if your ghost hits don't give you anything. Like, that's the whole point. That's why I said you should be using rot, and you should be using poison, because that's the easiest way you're going to get the damage on your opponent. It's just how it is. Rot and Poison is the easiest way to get damage off your opponent after that. After that, then comes in the mix-up, which is like the second best thing. 